Zatoichi killed the beautiful woman's brother, but instead of seeking revenge, she fell in love with him. The wandering Zatoichi arrived in Ishiwajuku and sought refuge with the local gang, the Ariswijuku gang. Along with him came Shinkichi from Kasatsu. After the Ariswijuku gang provided them with a meal and a place to stay, the boss, Kamikichi, demanded that Zatoichi and the others kill a debtor named Unosuke, who had been slow to repay the gang's gambling debts. The thugs sent to collect the debt had all been defeated by him. A fellow ronin, Shinkichi, boasted that he could take on six men by himself. He claimed to be protecting Zatoichi and pocketed the reward that had been given to Zatoichi. On their way to carry out the mission, Shinkichi even mocked Zatoichi, calling him a blind man who was just joining in on the excitement. However, when the group broke into Unosuke's house, the cunning Unosuke extinguished the lights, forcing everyone to swing their swords wildly in the darkness, even injuring their own companions. Hearing them escape wounded, Zatoichi smirked. It was time for the blind man to take action. Instead of attacking immediately, Zatoichi tried to persuade Unosuke with kind words. But as soon as Zatoichi entered the room, Unosuke seized the opportunity to attack, only to be repelled by Zatoichi's sword. With a swift, powerful horizontal slash, Unosuke's body was thrown several feet away, clearly dead. The others stared in disbelief, feeling as if the temperature had suddenly dropped 10 degrees on the snowy day. At that moment, a woman with a graceful figure emerged from the woods. Everyone's eyes were fixed on her. The woman, Osode, was searching for her brother, Unosuke. Unosuke was dead. Osode wept bitterly and clutched a purse in her hands. She had managed to gather the money to repay the debt, but it was too late. The boss, Kamikichi, shamelessly demanded that Osode pay the interest with her body even though the debt is paid. Zatoichi realized his grievous error and tried to protect the girl from the gang, but he was mocked as a blind fool. Enraged, Zatoichi swiftly drew his sword and cut off one of the gang member's hands. The gang member howled in pain, accusing Zatoichi of hypocrisy, claiming that he had killed the woman's brother and was now pretending to be righteous. Fortunately, Zatoichi could not see the expression in Osode's eyes, so he could only endure his guilt and negotiate with the boss, Kamikichi, in an attempt to save the unfortunate woman. As Kamikichi ranted and raved, Zatoichi learned that the Ariswijuku gang's pursuit of the debt was motivated by something else. Kamikichi wanted to force Osode to become a prostitute and earn money for him. Enraged by this revelation, Zatoichi declared, You're all going to die. One of Kamikichi's underlings retorted, A bold statement from a blind fool. You can't say blind fool three times, so you're dead. All the gang members drew their swords, ready to finish Zatoichi. However, Zatoichi deflected all their attacks with ease and pinned Kamikichi to the ground with a single strike. Although he could have easily killed them all, Zatoichi spared Kamikichi's life out of gratitude for the small favor he had been given. Zatoichi's acts of kindness, however, brought serious hidden dangers. In the small town, Zatoichi went to the inn to stay, but because there were too many guests and no extra rooms available, he had no choice but to share a room with the beautiful woman. Zatoichi found the beautiful woman is Osode. Zatoichi asked Osode if she hated him, but she replied that Unosuke had been a drunk and a gambler, and that his death was for the best. But he was, after all, her own brother. Ariswijuku gang persisted, sending a group of five to pursue Osode. Continue to force Osode to return and become a prostitute. However, Osode was being followed by more than just the five-man gang. Zatoichi was secretly protecting Osode as well. As soon as Zatoichi intervened, the five-man gang fled in fear. Zatoichi continued to escort Osode, but on their journey, they encountered a ronin with exceptional swordsmanship. Taken with Osode's beauty, the ronin attempted to forcibly embrace her. Two children nearby were kicking a shuttlecock. With a flick of his sword, Zatoichi sent the shuttlecock flying towards the ronin's head. With a swift movement, the ronin sliced the shuttlecock in two, revealing his exceptional swordsmanship. The ronin was also wary of Zatoichi's movements and aura, hesitant to engage him. The five-man gang, who had caught up, were impressed by the ronin's skill and asked him to help kill Zatoichi. The ronin demanded a thousand ryo, because Zatoichi was clearly a swordsman with exceptional martial arts skills. He wouldn't risk it unless he was paid a thousand ryo. To ease Osode's heartache, Zatoichi took her to hit over the rapidly moving tumbler dolls. Hit three tumbler dolls with the ball, could win a prize. Osode threw the ball several times, but she couldn't hit a single tumbler doll. In order to cheer up Osode, Zatoichi decided to play the game as well. Seeing that Zatoichi was blind, the stall owner thought he had come to give them money. All the tumbler dolls were moving rapidly, but Satoichi, straining his ears, managed to knock each one over with a single throw. Osode smiled for the first time in a long time. The stall owner and his wife were lamenting and complaining. Suddenly, Osode's expression changed. She realized that she was happy with the man who had killed her brother. Overcome by this realization, she walked away. That night, when they stayed at the inn, Osode was filled with guilt and decided to kill Zatoichi and then herself. 
She took out a short knife and stabbed Zatoichi. But the frail Osod failed in her attempt and ended up in Zatoichi's arms. The next day, Osod regained consciousness, and the two of them prepared to leave but realized they didn't have enough money to pay the innkeeper. Osod gave Zatoichi her expensive hairpin to sell. Zatoichi couldn't refuse and had no choice but to accept it, then turned and headed to the casino to try his luck. But luck was not on his side. He lost all his money in his first bet. Desperate, he offered his cane sword as collateral, but the casino owner thought it was just an ordinary walking cane, worthless, and refused to lend him any money. The ronin from earlier appeared and bought the sword without hesitation. With the gambling funds in hand, Satoichi didn't hesitate to cheat in order to win the game. But the ronin exposed his trick by cutting open the tampered dice. The casino owner was furious and ordered his men to drown Satoichi. Just then the five-man gang from the Ariswijuku arrived. They knew the casino owner and offered to help. After the casino owner left, the bound Zatoichi was kicked repeatedly by the five-man gang. Surprisingly, the mat he was tied to stood up on its own, and Zatoichi split it open. Having lost his sword, Zatoichi used Osod's hairpin to split the mat. Seeing that Zatoichi was unarmed, the five-man gang attacked. A wooden staff was thrown, and the gang, thinking Zatoichi had recovered his sword, fled in terror. Zatoichi asked the ronin for his cane sword, but the ronin instead drove it into the ground and assumed a striking pose. The ronin claimed that if Satoichi wanted to get his cane sword back, he would have to duel him. Suddenly three samurai rushed out and assassinated the ronin. The ronin suddenly turned and slashed at someone behind him. It turned out that there had always been assassins trying to kill the ronin. The three samurai were no match for the ronin and were quickly killed. The ronin insisted that Satoichi fight him, but Satoichi planned to escort Osod to Suwa first. They ultimately decided to have a duel in Suwa later. When Satoichi returned to the inn, he found a letter from Osod, who had left ahead of him. However, Osod was captured by the five-man gang shortly after she left. Sensing something was wrong, Satoichi rode a horse and rushed after Osod. In a sudden turn of events, while chasing after Osod at full speed, Satoichi heard her cry out. He tried to stop but fell off a cliff and lost sight of her. The five-man gang thought Satoichi had fallen to his death and gathered around to watch the spectacle. Osod took advantage of the situation and escaped. However, she had jumped out of the frying pan and into the fire. In the small hut she had taken refuge in, the lecherous ronin was eyeing her. The ronin was about to act dishonorably. The five-man gang burst into the hut and ruined his plans. The ronin fought with the gang. Osod seized the opportunity and fled. Zatoichi fell off the cliff and, after a great struggle, managed to climb back up, just in time to run into a friend Shinkichi. Zatoichi had no idea that Osod had already escaped. Believing that Osod had been captured by the five-man gang, Zatoichi and Shinkichi attacked the gang. In reality, the gang had lost track of Osod. A powerful figure took an interest in Osod, but the gang leader, Kamikichi, failed to deliver her in time. The powerful figure angrily scolded Kamikichi for his incompetence and decided to give the benefits that were previously promised to him to someone else. Kamikichi was furious when he heard this and stabbed the powerful figure to death. Kamikichi was still worrying about how to cover up his crime when Zatoichi and Shinkichi arrived. Kamikichi had just found a scapegoat. As soon as Zatoichi and Shinkichi entered, they discovered the corpse on the floor. The Ariswijuku gang then appeared and accused Satoichi of killing the powerful figure. Shinkichi tried to defend him, but Satoichi, sensing a conspiracy. Without any explanation or warning, Kamikichi ordered his men to surround and kill Satoichi and Shinkichi. But they underestimated Satoichi's strength no matter how many there were, they were no match for him. Satoichi was still worried about Osod and didn't want to get too entangled with the Ariswijuku gang. Satoichi fought his way through, carving a bloody path, evacuated with Shinkichi. Zatoichi was heading to Suwa to continue searching for Osod, and the two of them reluctantly said their goodbyes. Meanwhile, Osod found herself in big trouble. After arriving in Suwa and seeking refuge with her aunt, she was followed by the brothel's thugs. It turned out that the money she had raised for her brother Unosuke had been borrowed by selling herself to the brothel. Knowing she couldn't escape, Osod was forced to accept her fate. The madam arranged for Osod's first customer, who turned out to be Kamikichi, the boss of the Ariswijuku gang, who had been hunting Zatoichi. Kamikichi had discovered Zatoichi's whereabouts and had teamed up with the Myojin gang to hunt him down. Zatoichi, having learned of Osod's situation from her aunt, stormed into the brothel. He urged Osod to pursue her own happiness and then escaped with her through a window. Zatoichi hid Osod in an old temple. Fearing for Zatoichi's safety, Osod wanted him to stay, but Zatoichi, believing he had ruined her life, was determined to atone. Kamikichi immediately joined forces with the leader of the Myojin gang to launch a citywide search. With the sound of doors and windows shattering, to everyone's surprise, Zatoichi appeared at their doorstep. Kamikichi and the others were stunned. Zatoichi forced Kamikichi to confess to killing the powerful figure and framing him. 
The gang members attacked, but Satoichi easily killed three of them, knocked back the leader of the Myojin gang, and then held his sword to Kamakichi's throat. Kamakichi confessed to all his crimes and proved Satoichi's innocence. But if Kamakichi wanted to stay alive, there was still one thing he had to do. That was to hand over the money to ransom Osode's freedom. Kamakichi begged the leader of the Myojin gang for help. The leader played a trick, placing the money on a table. As Satoichi reached for the money, Kamakichi suddenly launched a sneak attack, but Satoichi's sword was as fast as lightning. In an instant, Kamakichi became a victim of his blade. The Myojin gang attacked, Satoichi shattered all the lanterns, and the room was immediately engulfed in darkness. Satoichi, fighting in the dark, easily defeated them. Suddenly, the sound of gunfire rang out. The Myojin gang want to shoot Satoichi. Satoichi rolled to dodge the bullet and continued to fight, killing the leader of the Myojin gang and the gunman. Osode, unable to wait any longer, left the temple to look for Zatoichi, but the Ronins stopped her. The Ronins' lecherous smile disappeared as Zatoichi appeared. Their long-awaited duel finally began. The Ronins said to Zatoichi, This woman is mine, and your life is as good as mine too. The Ronin launched the first attack on Zatoichi, but Zatoichi blocked it with his own blade. But then the sound of a New Year's drum began, and Zatoichi was nearly caught off guard by the Ronin's attack. The drumbeats grew faster and louder. Zatoichi was immediately on the defensive, forced to fight in a desperate and disorganized manner. Zatoichi took a deep cut, and his clothes were torn. With the drumbeats as a distraction, the Ronin's attacks were relentless, and Zatoichi was beaten with no ability to fight back. Zatoichi seemed to give up and lay on the ground, seemingly defeated. The Ronin approached cautiously, thinking the battle was over. But just as the drumbeats stopped, Zatoichi sprang up and delivered a fatal blow to the Ronin. The Ronin tried to fight back, but Zatoichi's sword was as fast as lightning, and the Ronin was quickly killed. Osode buried her face in Zatoichi's chest and cried non-stop. Zatoichi comforted her. The trouble has all been resolved. You can live a happy life from now on. Osode knew that Zatoichi had made up his mind to leave and desperately begged him to take her with him. But Zatoichi said nothing returned her hairpin and gave her the money to buy her freedom and then continued his wandering life.